really excited for this episode here um, on Cut to the Chase podcast. Um, this particular episode, I've been waiting for for a very, very, very long time. Um, anyone who knows me or um, follows me um, definitely at some point has heard of this individual. Um, I, I, I bring him up uh, a lot of times. Uh, it, you know, uh, he's a very, very, um, uh, very special person to me. Um, uh, I look up to him, um, and um, the timing of the of this, I think, is actually perfect because um, I've known him for a long time, and we haven't uh, got into a room uh, and have a conversation uh, on an episode on a podcast. So. Um, He's been very busy uh, for <laughs> for a lot of years. <laughs> he's been a, he's been a busy man, uh, and I think now he's uh, he has some time to kind of uh, make time to to get to to make time for himself to do certain things that he he wants to do. And he said that this is something that he wanted to do. I asked him, and uh, he said he he would be he'd be love he would love to do it. So, uh, Mr. Torin Francis, my man, Hunter Grin. Brother from num- from another mother. <laughs> for real, for real. We go, we go way back. We go way back ever since mm. I was in college, and um, you know I I have been looking forward, just like Chase said. Um, you know he's basically my brother, so you know he supported me throughout all these years, and you know I've been supporting him. I've been watching him grow, watching him evolve, watching him progress. So I'm excited for this podcast. I'm excited to be on this episode and you know I'm excited to see what comes next yeah yeah that's we've known yeah you you did say I've known you since college um you went to Notre Dame um if everyone doesn't know what Notre Dame <laughs> just if anyone's living on a on a rock or anything uh Notre Dame University uh in South Bend Indiana uh I've always wanted to ask you this why Notre Dame go Irish <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, what, what what brought you to what made uh, you know obviously you know for people who don't know uh, you were um, professional basketball player um, for 15 years right uh, pro right and I guess if you also add the years in college plus the years of high school you're talking about more than 20 years right of of competing at a high level right yeah yeah way more than 20 years. Um, you know, ju- just back to your question, uh, I didn't have the traditional, traditional college experience. So I played basketball throughout high school. I was actually a McDonald's All-American for for anyone who's familiar with high school basketball. So I had the chance to mm. go to any school I wanted, pretty much. And what, so what what was the schools on the list? By ch- like uh, like other <laughs> options besides uh, so. I mean, I I was always a good student, you know, so I I wanted to have that balance of uh, a powerhouse basketball-wise, but also uh, somewhere that had good academics where obviously if basketball didn't work out, then I would always have my degree, my education to fall back on. You know, that that was something that was always instilled in me by my mother, by my mentor, and just by my whole family, my whole foundation. They always set a a great foundation for me, so... Um, the schools that I was looking at, it was between Duke. I've heard of them. Yeah, Duke. Yep, I mean, I've heard of them. Duke. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good stuff they got going down there. I heard. Uh, yep. North Carolina. You know, someone, someone named MJ Michael Jordan. He yep. went there. Never heard of him. Um, Georgetown. Someone named Ewing went there. You know, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Know. Oh, I mean, well, yeah. well, for sure, because he's a Boston boy. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's a bo- yeah. you know Cambridge. You yeah. know, shout out to to Cambridge. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, Notre Dame, obviously. Right. Georgia Tech. Wow. BC. You know, I have to show love to Boston, but my, my Boston schools. Obviously, I, I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave Boston, but I still had to right. to give them a shot. Yeah. UConn. Mm. University of Florida. I've heard of them. Yep, a lot of gators, a lot of alligators <laughs> there. Yep. University of Kentucky and louisville I, university oh and, and university of virginia uva 
I mean, you could have said like four or five. I would have got the point, but I mean, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, you didn't have, I mean, I'm right in front of you. That's fine. I, I went to um, probably a college that probably it was initially an all girl school, and then they co ed to, to, a, to, a, to a guy in co ed. So, um, Never mind. That was just for me. We don't, we don't have to get into that. Uh, I went to Mount Ida College. Oh yeah, Mount Ida. Yeah. Mount yeah. Manor, yeah. Also, the uh, the producer of this uh, of this awesome episode went there as well. So, um, yeah, I was a little different. I wasn't a McDonald American, <laughs> but I was pretty competitive, um, and I was able to kind of uh, you know create a little uh, area for myself where I was able to still compete at a at a at a at a f- high level because it was really good guys that that was still good that I played with, um, but I mean there's levels to it right obviously and uh, to, there's not that many people in the world. I want people to listen to this. There's not that many people in the world that are great at what they do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there's people that are good at what they do, right? But there's not that many people that are great at what they do. And in my opinion. For someone to say that I was one of the best twenty players in the country, <laughs> not you know, say that's like really, really out there for me to understand to a degree because it's not like you're the one of the best twenty people on your block. You know what I'm saying? Because people will know, right? People will know, like, yo, he's one of the best people on the court. That you have the local hood star. You know what I'm saying? But you're talking about you know a position that you were in as a high school player. You were top. 20 player in the country so at what was the pressure like feeling that and kind of or you know how did, was it, did you feel any pressure i mean well i mean how is that like being a mcdonald american knowing that you can go to anywhere in the country so for me there wasn't any pressure at all just because uh, most of these players they're starting their basketball career at a young age two three years old uh, you know i was actually um, basically the opposite of that. So when I was younger, I was playing bas- I'm sorry, I was, I was playing soccer. Soccer was my first sport, actually, when I was six years old. Then baseball, when I was about seven. Yeah. I was running track. I played football, um, you know, and I do, I do thank my mother because she always got me into sports at a very young age, you know, so I was always active no matter what. But right. obviously I'm 6'11", so. Couldn't tell. I was always taller than my peers and everyone always asked me oh do you play basketball do you play basketball no no I do though in gym class I play basketball but right not not seriously and so when I was about 13 I was finally like I'm gonna give this a shot how tall were you at 13 13 be nice I'm right in front of you I was probably about six 13 I'll probably say six two yeah shit I was definitely six feet. I thought you were going to be. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I was definitely six feet. Yeah, I heard you the first time. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> don't be mad, man. Don't be mad. So That's tough. Yeah. Yeah, so I basically started playing. And what happened was my mother, she was actually looking for someone to work out with me. You know, and there, were, there was one time, there's one coach, I actually remember, my mother went into – his office, he was coaching at a community center in Boston, and she was basically looking, you know, I told her, she knows I'm 13, I'm tall, she sees a ton of potential in me, so she's really looking for someone to help me develop my skills, you know, so she went, she was meeting with coaches, so this one coach, okay, she goes into his office, the coach never even looks up, the coach is at his desk working on whatever he's working on, my mother's like, oh, my son, he's six feet tall he's only 13 he's really interested in the game i mean if i told you his name you would know who he is you know boston small yeah so he's really interested in the game yeah coach was just at his desk never looked up yeah and then i guess he was like all right leave me your number whatever so next thing my mother finally found someone obviously i didn't work out with him but (laughs) I'm sure he wished I would have a couple years later because we would always be killing the team that he was coaching for. Uh, but, um, so it was a little, little, yeah, little, yeah. little, 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 little uh, yeah, underscore yeah, sure. revenge I'm a little sure. bit. He, always, yeah. he tried to recruit me too at that time. Right. And so um, uh, my mother finally found someone for me to work out with. That's how I feel when like the, like the first girl in high school like didn't like me. No, nah, it's or always like, like that. Know? It's always <laughs> like that. And it's like, yo, see me now or look at me yeah. now or look at me years later. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so 
my my mother finally found someone for me to work out with and i just really developed a love for the game you know it's like i would go work out with him claude pritchard is his name he oh, was my mentor you know claude i do know claude yeah i work i used to go he very well known he, in boston very, yeah, yeah yeah he you know he's he's basically a boston legend everyone yeah. that has to do with, with basketball in boston i gotta tell him. you a story about claude too before right. you get into all right, it, right? Cool, cool cool claude i mean you know i would go you know bn boston bnbl was very big back then right the boston neighborhood basketball league in the summertime and i would play with a with a team you know and claude would coach and also you would see him do i'll be I was kind of always like in, in awe of him because he was able, he was a type of dude that was like so involved in so many different things and was able to like stop and do another thing and stop and do another thing and just go back to coaching, go back to like community service, go back to like being like, I'm like, who the f- this guy has to be someone because he's, he's doing everything, right? And my brother at the time, I played BNBL for a little bit and you know, he always remembered me. We always was, you know, cordial and nice and stuff. And I literally went up to Claude. This is like years later after I left. You know, I was in college at the time. I had a little brother that was pretty good. And I was like, listen, man, I, I knew that you had to go to certain places to get the best training, to, to be good, right? So you, you compete. Because we when we were playing, right, we, we, were playing, we were forced to play with, like, people that were better than us. That's what got us better, right? Like, I would play on the courts that were, like, were against guys that were three, four years older than me. And that, that's how I got better. So I was like, okay, if I want my brother to get better, he needs to go to a place where the, pay- the best places are. And he was running the best fucking AAU program, you know, pretty much in the, in the state. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, hey, Cla- Claude, uh, I have a brother, you know, he's like, he's a freshman in high school. Uh, he's like, you know, five, six, you know, he's, but I just want him to learn here. I want him to be like, he's not good enough yet to, to play here, but I want him just to be around it. I want him to, you know, at least do some drills, practice or something, you know. He's like, listen, man. Just bring him, and he'll 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 be on the, he'll he'll play he'll be on the team, you know. It was like fifty to fifteen under at the time, you know. He didn't play a lot, but just by my brother being with those players that were so much better than him, helped him. When he went back to his high school, he became so much better. Yeah, so I always yeah. owe that up to him. I felt like he Claude pays a lot of things forward for kids and athletes, you know, and people. So that, I had to just get that in there yeah, and give no, him a, 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 a shout out, you know. He does, and, and that's one of the things that helped me develop. And so, you know, just fast forward. So I, I start working out with him every day after school. I just develop a love for the game. After the workout, I'm playing pickup too. Remember, I'm 13 years old. I'm playing pickup with 17, 18 year, years old, year olds. Right. So I just, I, I, it just, everything just clicked. So for me, I never had any pressure. For me, it was really me showing everyone basically like look at me now because people used to clown me they used to say oh you're tall for nothing mm. um yeah yo I you have all too. this height yeah i you, get that no too. skills i get that too <laughs> yep, i get that two years later i know how you feel people were telling me oh that was all constructive criticism like yo we're the ones that got you better and i'm like okay maybe that did maybe that did maybe um, that did mm. motivate me mm. but i just felt like i had Something to prove. A chip on my so a shoulder, a chip on my shoulder, you know. So it wasn't really pressure. It, it, uh, it, yeah. it, maybe there was pressure once I got better because then it was like then you're under the spotlight. But until that time, I was like, all right, I'm 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 progressing. I'm getting better. I'm growing. Yeah. You know, three years later, when I was 16, 17 years old, I basically went from starting to play when I was 13, 14, to being one of the top players in the country being nationally ranked you know and i think that's just a testament to work you know work yeah you know, nothing work yeah nothing not you can't i mean yeah i mean based on your example like your of your experiences like how can anyone not like agree to that i mean that's purely due to hard work right because and it, i get it you know and in our fields right you know it's in comedy too you know you can be like you can actually be you know good but if you don't continue to practice all the time and work on your craft every day you won't you'll just stay where you are you know so it's kind of like with athletics right like you you know that's that's all that's all areas of life that's that's all areas of life man it's 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 really habits you know i'm not sure (laughs) there's like there's like a couple so there's like one book 
called um, Compound Effect. Okay. Darren Hardy, another book called uh, Atomic Habits by uh, Cleary, you know. Th- they just talk about basically just repetition and how developing these habits, you don't see the you don't see the results after one or two days and that's where that, I think that's where some people they don't they're not committed they start doing something one week later they're done yeah you know it's like you yeah. have to execute these habits and then over time you're gonna see the change you know so I think that's really something that was developed in me at a young age and I actually was was like it was like direct proof I was like a direct result of putting in that work and then just seeing the results uh, compound after three years of starting to play basketball, becoming one of the top players in the country, being able to go to school for free. Yeah. You know, so I like free. What? Who doesn't like free? Especially when I take shit for free that I don't even need, right, but well, just because it's free, I'll take yeah, it. So, so now think about a, a whole college education. All right, I you probably won't I mean? take that, but I'll definitely go to lunch. <laughs> I've been in lunch. <laughs> I'm almost never really good in school, but I, I, I was a big on the cafeteria. That was yeah. that was a great subject for me. But, um, yeah, repetition is um, it's not it's something that's um, it's you know it's it's a thing that works, right? It's it's always been proved. It's something that you, it's a, it's a formula that's unbreakable at I'm, this point. I'm proof, and I'm I'm living proof. Yeah, of it. And you went ahead and went to obviously, you know, went to a prep school and um, Boston and uh, got a scholarship offered to uh, all these schools. And then you chose Notre Dame. Now you're at Notre Dame as a young man, and you're stepping into a position where you're the you're the man, right? Because you're you're yeah. you're starting. You're, yeah, you're yeah. the guy. And, and that as was a freshman, yeah, and that they're not asking you to like grow a little bit. You know, like they're telling you to be like, we're giving you the keys to this is your house. So. From 2000, and if I'm not mistaken, from 2002, 2006, right? Notre Dame Arena. What was the arena called? I mean, what was it? Uh, Joy Center. Joy. It was the Joy Center. Yeah, they, it, it's it's actually been redone since then. Okay. But it was the Joy Center back then. And shit, that was one of the main reasons why I went. You know, obviously, when I was like, all right, so when I went to visit Duke, if anyone knows about Cameron stadium that's basically one if not one of the best college atmospheres ever so when i went to visit duke first of all i was just basically Mm. i was i was starstruck just by the coach i'm like yo this is coach k like one of the best coaches ever yeah and so i haven't i've never met him but i i I, he's one of i'm gonna get him on his podcast that's, yeah, my, that's yeah, my goal. Yeah, do it. I'm bro. definitely gonna get it. Coach K. Yo, K. Right. Coach K. I'll try you to know, make that happen. For don't you. get mad at Turin <laughs> for not committing to Duke. <laughs> like, my eyes I'll still try. watching the podcast. So, t- <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to make that happen. Make that, yeah, my man. So, I go visit Duke. They actually have a, an exhibition game going on that night, and that's when they had James Williams, um, okay. Shane Battier. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. uh, who else did they have? They had Trajan Langdon. Trajan Langdon. Oh, my God. That's a name from the past. They had um, uh, Tall. Tall. Um, played in the league. I can't I can't remember his name. He was like a 3-4 man. Sure. They had Battier. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm sorry. I said Battier. They had Boozer. Carlos had Boozer. Carlos Boozer. Yes, yeah, so, bro. They had a squad. First of all, let Yo. me just say something before you go on with that. With that, any person that's oh Dunleavy Jr. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Mike Dunleavy Dunleavy Jr. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Carlos Boozer with a name that I will ever forever fear. If someone ever calls me like by Boozer, yeah. I will never be afraid by the name of Dunleavy. But shout out to Mike Dunleavy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, yeah. Booze. Yeah. Yeah. So they they had a squad. So. I walk up into the exhibition game. I'm already like, yo, this is crazy. This is an exhibition game. This wasn't even a, a season game. Yeah, this, this is just, just dudes. A, this is just, just dudes that just hooping. Yeah, this is just an exhibition game. They knew they were about to win by like 40. And the stadium was already going crazy with the Cameron Crazies. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's halftime. I'm watching the game. It's half mm-hmm. t- it's 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 after halftime. It's like third quarter. They all start chanting, "We want Francis!" Like we want Francis! Like everyone in the uh, in the arena. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, I was about to commit. Then I'm like, damn, I'm right. I'm here. I'm in Cameron. 
Hell they're yeah. chanting my name. I know that feeling because <laughs> when I got when I was getting like you know when I was going to schools looking at schools, I mean they, I wasn't looking at the games like as I was looking at the girls. I was that was my, I went I decided where the most girls I was gonna get. That's that's, that's how I chose my commitment letter. <laughs> Which girls liked me <laughs> in the cafeteria when I visited? Yeah, just shit. They had a lot of girls there too. I mean, it was dude, you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, I bet I bet. But yeah. Yeah, it was just it was just crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, damn, I'm about to commit here right now, right. you know. But they had, you know, Duke. They had they have two, three, four players at every position, and I'm like, that's not what I want. I'm a big. I'm. I wasn't a McDonald's All American yet. I was like, I'm about to be a McDonald's All American. I need to go somewhere, start, make an automatic impact, right, right away. Yep. Automatic that's, presence. That's how I am on know, Tinder. So. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that my pro. That's actually tind- my profile. Fucking first line. The right Tinder there. king, right here. Yo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to make an impact. <laughs> I'm not here to have sex. I'm here to have. Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. This is your story. <laughs> you there to find a relationship? Nah, yeah. We'll talk about this another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, but that willingness to, but but that, but but that, that awareness at that time to know exactly what you wanted at that time was. Um, it's something that's pretty, pretty good because you know exactly. Because my thing is this: it's like, it's kind of like life, um, especially what I do now too. Um, we can't really pay attention to what other people are doing or to other people's energies, right? Like, we have to go to where we have to choose where we fit, like what's best for us. Sometimes some situations look really great and they're presented as such, and we probably would succeed in those situations, but. There's something that tells us inside, like that. This is not the right place for me. For you know, in that case, you knew that if you was to go there, you, you know, you would have to sit back. And you're like, no, I know what I can do now, and I'm gonna choose a school where I know I can make an impact right away. I think, I think people who can get that, you know, is I think they'll be. It helps. It helps you proceed a little bit long, uh, better in life, in my opinion. Yeah, if you don't follow yeah. the crowd or follow, you know. No. Fuck that. It's it's all yeah, and it's all confidence. You know, it's, it's like I had gotten to a point where I'm like, all right, I'm I'm one of the top players in the country. Like I'm not about to go sit beside behind someone else. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so that 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 does that does go in the same sense as everyone having their own path. You know, so it's really about what's best for you. But you know, for me, it's. It's it's really all about what your goals are too. You know, obviously, I got to the point first when I first started playing basketball. I was like, all right, I have the potential to actually go to school for free, and so that was my main goal. Yeah. Then, after that, I'm like, all right, I'm definitely going to go to school for free now. Shit, I have, I could I could probably play professionally. You know what I mean? And it it was never one of those things where I dreamt as a kid that I want to play in the NBA. It was one of those things where it just developed from the love from the game, from my hard work. And I'm like, all right, I actually have a chance to do this. So that now, my decision to go to school was really based off off that. What's the best way for me to get to the NBA now as quickly as possible? I see. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You go from choosing the school from high school, right, where you just – the only thing that's in front of your your – in front of you is, is the college that you have to pick. Now you're playing in college, starting, making an impact, and now you're forced with another decision to that's that that which I'm sure pretty much people are telling you all the time because you're reading about it, it's on ESPN, you're on you're playing, you know, you're and you also you're playing in the Big East. This is like the like the original Big East, you know? So all eyes were on the Big East. And it, you, you know. And that's one of the that's one of the other reasons why I chose Notre Dame just because it was between Notre Dame and the ACC. I mean, the Big East and the ACC. Those are the best two conferences, but Big East was the best conference back then. Mm-hmm. Now there's no more Big East. Right. I don't know if anyone's ever seen Requiem for a Big East, but that basically tells about the whole history of what the Big East used to be to how it is, it, how it where it is now and how it isn't anymore. But Big East was the best conference, so that I was like, I want to play in the Big East. Plus, I'm I'm from Boston, so you know, if I went to Notre Dame, we'd be playing against BC, mm-hmm. which that's a local game for my mother. Yep. 
my mother, fortunately, she was able to go to all the games in St. John's in New York, Rutgers, Villanova, all the games on the East Coast, she was there, you yeah. know? So that was, Good. that that also went into to making that decision. But um, my mom went to the game when I was 12 at Forest River Park when I played for the Salem Terriers. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. What? What about? What about? Well, I wasn't. You know, she. Well, yeah. She. That's all. She. Saw, that's all she needed to see. She was. She. She made. She made a decision at that time. It's like, yeah, hey, he's not going to be. Yeah, he's all right. uh, this isn't it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but but my freshman year, freshman year was amazing. It was it was amazing, and because you, you had a gr- you had a really good freshman year. Yeah. So freshman year, and basically, I was like, yo, I made the right decision. You know, saying so, I went. Got to school, I ended up starting, and you have to remember my class. For anyone who who knows basketball, there was Carmelo was in my class. We're talking about Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, well, you're not talking yeah. about like Carmelo from like the Bronx. We're no. talking about, yeah, the way you said it was <laughs> no, like Yo, about Carmelo. Carmelo, hey. Carmelo, yeah, Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, the, Car- um, the Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so he was in there your was, so, McDonald All American. Yeah, class. so my my game it was Carmelo, it was Stoudemire, Amari Stoudemire. Um, on my team, so me, Carmelo Stoudemire, mm-hmm. were on the same team. JJ Redick, okay, was on my team. Good handsome guy, um, I like JJ. Really yeah, good handsome. Yeah, they had um, on the other team. It was um, Chris Bosh. Heard was of him on the other team. Yep, heard of him. Yep. Um, and then a bunch of you know a bunch of other guys who you know they they did well, had great careers. Yeah. But um, it was yeah it was it was a great game. I actually got Player of the Year in that game. You know, so that. I got play of the year that McDonald's game, which was amazing, you know, but it was really one of those things where play of the year was, mm. it, it had to do with not only being a good player, but also being a good, um, a, a good student. You know what I mean? Yeah, because so you were a good student. student. Athlete. Yeah, you were, you were, you were pretty much the, the definition of a scholar athlete. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. A, like, cause most, cause most jocks guys, like, you know, the stereotypes, like, oh, they could play, but they're not, you know, the old, you know, whatever, like g- generic stereotypes are just saying, you know, jocks are not Bro. smart or whatever but you you are not an example of that <laughs> Yo, listen you were a, like smart in high school and you you because listen i i tell people that you know when i tell them where you went to school you know they say oh well where do you you know i was like he could have went to any school in the country you know like but he said to him, i told him i was like yeah like your education was important to you you know and notre dame i feel like they they're interested in recruiting um not so much as the best athletes but more so well-rounded athletes outside from uh, athletics, right? Yeah, well, you know, I, I credit that to my mother. Um, my mother's Jamaican. You know, people from the islands, they Co- don't play. Cocoa bread yeah. and cheese, boy. <laughs> people, no, me no people, pate. people from the islands don't play. That was terrible. Like, if I was in high school, if I got a C, she was like, hell no, you're not working out. And so, you know, that was like, mm. that's basically all the motivation I needed. Yeah, because, Mama Francis was not playing. You know, yeah, I told you, I just fell in love with the game going working out with Claude every day after school. So if I had to get the grades to do that, I was gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? So I credit yeah. I credit that to her. And my mother my mother, so my work ethic, my mother, she basically raised six kids and she went to school. She went to work full time. She went to school. She got her bachelor's, her masters and her doctorate all while raising six kids so my mother for me is like the epitome of hard work so that's really Mm. where i get that from you know but she wasn't playing with the school she was like yo if you get a seed on basketball so that's you know how immigrant you know how you know how parents are especially from other countries you know education's a priority you know yeah they don't they don't play yeah they don't play my my, because i got a seat because i failed one class in my junior year which is the most important year to be failed (laughs) <laughs> I don't, well, let's, let's, let's get one thing straight. This is cut to the Chase podcast. Oh, waffle, you ain't going to judge waffle, me. Waffle, waffle. <laughs> Fuck that. <Waffle. laughs> I'm still getting over that because I didn't play. You know, forget it. Never mind. I won't bring it up. <laughs> no, I didn't play. Uh, uh, I got a bad grade and my dad didn't let me play uh, at all. Yeah, that's how it should be. You can't be rewarded for not doing what you're supposed to do. And I have kids, too. So that's, you know, basically that's that's my approach. Yeah. No, it's 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 it teaches you accountability. Yes. At an early age. You know, and I think there's a lot of that going not going on today with you know, with kids and things like that, but that's a whole nother thing. But yeah, you know, um 
but you know, you're at Notre Dame, you're playing, and you, you know, you play, you come in from a great pedigree. You're a scholar athlete. Things are going well. You're at freshman year. You're you're you're, you're rolling. You enter the 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 Sweet Sixteen your freshman year, right? Probably the best yeah. game um, of your career, right? Would you say? Yeah. So that year it was it was I actually made the Big East All Rookie Team, which is amazing. Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony, mm-hmm. not Carmelo from from Brooklyn. Nope, nope. Not for Carmelo from the hood. Nah. He actually got rookie of the year. He actually went to Syracuse, stayed one year. They won the national championship that year. So it's not a bad person to get runner-up. I got runner-up for rookie of the year in the Big East. Mm. So, uh, you know, but but aside from that, I had an amazing year. My team had an amazing year. We were – we actually finished ranked – or we were as high as ranked fifth in the country that year. Right. And what happened – was there was there was this one stretch, so before the before the season even started, I'm telling people like, yo, our team, we have a good ass team, we have a good team, and you know how it is in the college, you don't need to have in, in any in any sport. It's all about team. Basketball is a team game. If you have a couple big names, that doesn't mean you're gonna have a good team, right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh so yeah, we had, that. yeah, we didn't really have <clears throat> all the big names on paper. I mean, we did. We had a couple. We had me. Mm-hmm. We had Chris Thomas, who was another McDonald's who came in the year before I did. Yeah, Chris Thomas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's really, it was actually really that Notre Dame, they had the stereotypical football school. They were known for being a football school. Yeah. That's the reputation they had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I got there. I'm like, yo, this is a basketball school. Now. It's not a football. It's always going to be a football school. But yeah. we, Especially were, the, the, we were better. Yeah. We were better than the football team right. at that time. Especially when you got National Player of the Year. Yeah. Like the best player in the country coming in, you you have to like yeah. stay that. Right? Yeah, like yeah, a, bro. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we go to the Sweet Sixteen in the tournament. We uh what do we play? We played uh Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. That was like a that was like a, a, a mad close game in the beginning. And that was like one of those twelve five games where we were like five seed. They were 12 seed. They, those are always like some of the upset games. Right. So we ended up winning that game by like one point, which was crazy, which is crazy. I think I had like, I had like 22 and 10. So I started it off right okay. from, my, from my first tournament. And I think we were, so we were ranked fifth seed. I think at that time we were like, um, we were top 20 in the country. But, uh, you know, just to, just to sum it up, yeah. we ended up losing to – we go to the Sweet Sixteen. We beat Illinois. They had, they had uh, Cook. They had uh, what's his, what's his name? Played for Illinois. Forgot. Mm-hmm. Big man that played for Illinois. Okay. They were actually a top. They were actually a higher seed than us. They were. It was like a four or five game. So yeah. we ended up beating them yeah. to go to the Sweet Sixteen, where we played Arizona. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And, and Arizona. That's when they had they had uh, Stoudemire. They had um, they had Channing Fry. Okay. They had um, for oh they had Iguodala, Andre, Andre Iguodala. That's wow. when he was he was my my year too. Which obviously he's still playing now. He's with uh he's still with with uh is he st- I believe he's, he's, a, I believe he's not with Golden State anymore. I, I believe he went back if I'm not mistaken. I but he yeah. might, did he go back? I think he went okay, back. Yeah, yeah. So he had an amazing career. Yeah. So we ended up losing to them. Yeah. In the Sweet Sixteen. Arizona had a good team. They had yeah, a good they team did. as well. Yeah. They did. They yeah. did. They, had a, they seemed like they had a lot of um. A lot of uh, upperclassmen yeah, that I led that team, right? They yeah. actually ended up losing to Duke in the next round in the in the in the mm. elite, elite eight. They ended up losing to Duke oh, yeah. that year, but it was. I mean, I'm a freshman. I'm yeah. av- I averaged twenty and twelve in the tournament. Yeah, everyone was telling me, "Oh, you need to leave. You need to make that step, go to the NBA," and that was just amazing to me because it's like I came, I came that far from just being a kid from Boston that everyone was clowning, talking about you're tall for nothing, to actually having the opportunity to to enter the draft. You know, so mm. yeah, walk me through that quickly. How was that what's that process like and, and what made you decide to stay uh, or not go or go and you know? So I had I had an agent advising me then, you know, you can't as an underclassman you technically can't be signed with an agent. Uh-huh. Because you lose your eligibility. So I just had an agent advising me who had the scoop. And he was saying who, that 
I should basically declare for the draft now because I'm going to be drafted between 15 and 25, which is first round. Which is first round. Yeah, which is first round. Yeah. But at that time, you know, I'm like, I'm feeling myself. I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm killing right now. I'm like, fuck that. I need to be a first rounder. I mean, I need to be a lottery pick. Which okay. lottery pick yeah. back then were like the top 13 picks. So I'm like, okay. I need to be a lottery pick. Right. Even though if you get drafted first round, that's still guaranteed. That's still guaranteed money. Sure. You know what I mean? So I I was like, nah, I'm not I'm just gonna stay, do two years, and then next see year where I'm I'll at. be a lottery pick. Right, see where I'm at. You so pretty and much then, you bet it you bet it against yourself. You was yeah. like, I'm gonna bet against myself and up up my up my stock. Yeah. Like most people do. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Unfortunately it didn't go that way <laughs> my sophomore year. Right, right. My sophomore year it was, you know, I was I was playing well initially. Just to sum it up, I was playing well, um, but the team was losing, which no one cares about that. People care about winners. No one cares if you're averaging twenty points a game and you're on a losing team. You know, I was averaging the year before fourteen points a game, mm. but we were nationally ranked. And right. We were winning. Right. You know, right. if you're at the top twenty-five, that's when you're getting all the airtime. Right. That's when you're getting yeah. all the highlights. Yeah. That's when you're getting all that. Yeah, all the know? cotton candy. All, yep. All, all that. that. That's what I would be doing. Yeah. But, you know. All I, that. Yeah. I all that. <laughs> we're, my, my freshman year, we were skipping class. They couldn't tell us shit. We were like, <laughs> <laughs> we were, <laughs> freshman year, yeah. we're, we we travel for the Sweet 16. Yeah. I'm skipping class. Yeah. We're, that's funny. You guys still went. I wouldn't have gone. I just would have just. <laughs> Bro, we're, just, yeah, like, we're, yeah. the, we're like walking up in a bar like yo mm -hmm. and, and and keep in mind at this time i was 18 years old i'm walking up in a bar right i'm bringing people in a bar with me <laughs> right. like, yo, oh. i'm underage myself oh. i'm bringing people in a bar people used to call us like yo you guys going to the bar tonight i'm like yeah <laughs> could we go with you yeah come on we good that's pretty. That's but, yeah. That's a, that's no. Nah, it, wow. was, it was amazing. College, yeah. college was amazing. College oh yeah, was amazing. especially college. at a school, especially at a school like that. Yeah, you know? college, college um, was amazing. College was amazing. But um, yeah. yeah, So yeah, you know, sophomore year, it's. I mean, it's it, it's a it's a long story. It was actually pretty devastating. Mm. You know, it was already disappointing because we just weren't winning. I had just come off a winning year, being one of the top teams in the country. You know, so I felt like that's when, you know, you go back to the pressure. You know, I, f I think that's when <clears throat> I really felt the pressure mm. just because now you you basically enter the school, you do amazing. So now it's like you have all these, these expectations to, to live up to, you know. And I'm an underclassman. I'm a sophomore. But it's like I embraced that. I didn't run from it. I embraced it. You know, it was just one of those things where yeah. it just different team. Shit didn't happen. Different man. year. Things. You know, we're losing. We're, and the thing is, we were losing a ton of close games. We were losing. Right. I think we lost 15 games by like two points. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like less than five points. You Listen, know, so. man, I, I'll say this, man. A lot of the times, in, in my opinion, even when you have – it's interesting, even though when you have your game plan in order that you think is, is the plan, the blueprint, you know, I just firmly believe in life you never, you're just never in control of your path, you know? Like, you are to a degree, but at the end, you only can wish and hope for the best uh, that, that, that your practice and your continuous um, progress is, is leading to where you want to get to. But at the end of the day, there's something called the inevitable. And the inevitable is something that no human can control. I don't care what these motherfuckers out there are trying to do to make it seem like you can do that. There's something called the inevitable, and that thing alone is more powerful than anything you probably have done in your life and mastered. Because it could happen in a second, and it could be taken away. It did. It did. I, I learned that shit the hard way, man. And, and it's funny that you say that, because that's exactly what happened. You know, you put in the work. That you put in the work, that's always going to show. Yeah. But there's always going to be some type of uh, outside factors yeah. that are either helping you or prohibiting you to do whatever you want to do. You know. So my sophomore year, you know, fast forward my sophomore year, we were losing games that we should have won. Mm -hmm. I'm killing. I think I was averaging like 19 at that point, but then. 
Damn, it even it, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, man. it just brings me back. It brings me back. Brings me back. But yeah, the thing, I, bas- I basically I got hurt. I got hurt. Yeah. Oh well, so, something so, that you can't control though. So what happened was one game we were playing Pittsburgh. I'll never remember. I'll never forget this. We were playing Pittsburgh. We're doing layup lines. You know, anyone who plays basketball, layup mm-hmm. lines is basically like the standard warm up that you do. Not for me. I dunk, know. but go ahead. <laughs> do- That's your weak guys. <laughs> yeah. So I fucking puff it in there. <laughs> First of all, you know a person that says puff is not dunking. I know puff. What does that mean? I stopped myself. Puff? What the fuck did I? What was uh, that puff about? Puff it in there. Oh, I, don't know. I, I gotta stop that. talking on this podcast. Go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. So. We're doing layup lines. I'm not even dunking yet. You know, the layup lines, it's like you got to be cool. You start off you finger rolling, out. laying it. Lay. You got the little warm, windbreaker. You got yeah. the ankle. You got the, oh, yeah. like, the you button up. The button up. Showing the leg thigh a little bit. You tear them shits off yet. Nah. You still have You tear those off after. You tear those off. Once you start dunking yeah. and shit, then you go <laughs> tear those shits off and throw them on oh, the yeah. sideline. There's an etiquette to the warm-up. Yeah, People so don't I, know. I still had those on. I had a lot of thigh showing on one leg. I had like the... <laughs> No, like, you had to have it opened up. Yeah. I used to have like three buttons unbuttoned yeah. on both sides just so you could see my shorts and shit. Yeah, that's out. what yeah. I would do too, son. Yeah, so <laughs> doing layups. And then I went to lay, I didn't even dunk it. I just went to lay it up. Yeah. I laid it up and I came down and I just felt something in my back. And I'm like, the mm. fuck was that? Landed, landed wrong or some shit? I, bro, yeah. I didn't even land wrong. I just laid it up and landed normally. Oh, okay. And I just felt something in my back. And so I kept doing layups, warming up, but it just it just felt weird. It felt, you know, you know your body, it was just off. You know what I'm saying? So game started. I actually scored the first bucket of the game. It was just a layup. Mm-hmm. Easy layup. work. Yeah. Light easy work. Easy work. Mm-hmm. And then Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was like one of our rivals. So and we were playing at home. So it's like, yo. Yeah, we definitely have to beat to, this yeah, team. About to get in that yeah, league. we definitely have to beat this team. Ooh, you know, ooh, so, ooh, ooh, ooh. so <laughs> that's my cheerleader. That's my sorry. That I always <laughs> do that when I get hyped. I ooh, ooh, ooh. sorry. So I do a layup, simple layup, no dunk, nothing. Come down, not weird. Normal landing normally, and I just felt something in my back, and I'm like, damn. I don't know what that is, but I, yeah, I don't know. It just feels, this, this it doesn't seem right. Off. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, so I started the game, scored the first bucket. <clears throat> Two minutes passed. I was like, yo, coach, take me out. Coach Bray. Mike Bray is my coach. He's still the coach there, actually. Shout out to Coach Bray. Shout out to Coach Bray. He's done an amazing job with the program over there. He's been super consistent, and uh, he's just been been winning. You know, they, they've had a, a couple of tough years the past few years, but – you know, I've I've been out of school for 15 years now. So, you know, 10 of those years, they've been in the tournament. They've done great. So, shout out to mm-hmm. to, to Breezy, Coach Breezy. Real Breezy. <laughs> Not Chris Breezy. <laughs> no, nah, that's Coach Mike Breezy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I came out, told my trainer, like, I don't know what's wrong with my back, but I can't, I can't even run. They were like, oh, you have back spasms. That's with everything. They said, anytime your back was hurting, you have back spasms for anything. Mm. So I got on the bike, was on a bike, on a bike on the sideline. Like, But I'm in my head. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm just on a bike like, damn. So I tried to go back in the game. Right. Wasn't working. It was like, nah, it wasn't working. Yep. It wasn't working. Yeah. And so that was, you know, for me, that was devastating just because – I hadn't even been playing basketball that long. I've been playing basketball, what, five years? And so I'm already feeling like, yo, what's going on? You know, I had. I see. I see I what's never, going on. I see where you're going with this. Yeah. injury, yeah. never anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just like, I'm healthy. I'm young. What could actually be the problem? You know, so that's, that, that, that's one, of those, one of those times where, it was just you're doing everything you have to do, but there's just other forces outside that are contributing, mm-hmm. whether you know negatively or positively, to what to what you're actually doing. You know, so I actually had what I had was I had a herniated disc, and so I had I I couldn't play. I had to basically do. Rehab and a rehab is basically a lot of abs. You know, anyone who has back problems, you should always do a lot of abs, a lot of core. Now I work on my core nonstop all the time. But 
that's what I had to do. I had to work on my core for a few weeks before I actually had the surgery just to try to prevent actually having surgery. Surgery is always supposed to be last resort, always, always. And so I, I did that for, did like a thousand abs or more per day for a, a few weeks, for like a month, for like six weeks. And there was no improvement, so I had to get surgery. And so that's basically, this was February of my sophomore year. So February is actually when, it was actually uh, January 27th. I remember the day that was a game when we played Pittsburgh where that's when it happened, you know. So basically, I ended up getting the the surgery a couple months after that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it was like, the end of March, I had, I ended up getting the surgery, but I basically my whole my whole sophomore year was was done. My whole sophomore year was done. But okay. the thing, but the thing about it was, once I got hurt, my team started winning. <laughs> so I'm like, I felt even more fucked up because I'm like, damn, uh. I get hurt, we're losing, I'm playing well, but then I get hurt. And then team starts winning. Shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, now you're facing with that other angle of looking, another lens of looking at your, your, yes. your I guess what you, yes, what, like so, what your presence is like really. So I uh, already felt. Interesting. I already felt horrible just for being hurt, not being able to. Contribute and all that. Play, do the sport that I love, not yeah. being able to help my team. But then also I was happy for my team that they're winning. I was supporting them. I was on the sidelines cheering. But then I'm like, damn, that's that's kind of fucked up too that they're winning without me. You mm. know what I mean? So Yeah. That was that was a tough time. That was that was definitely a super tough time in my career. Super tough. And it was, you know, I can luckily say I'm blessed to say that that's really the only serious injury I've ever had. I mean, I had I actually broke my finger like a few years ago which I had to miss some time too. You know, that's that's later on down the line, but yeah. That was that was a tough time for me just to get through that and then you know also see my team win. Maybe I was thinking that that I started kind of like doubting myself and and my abilities. That's you know? normal. Yeah. I could see I I you, yeah, of course. No you know, I think that's a, that, that's a normal you know, feeling to go through, you know, especially at your, at the level that you were at, you know, listen, I feel the pressure when there's no fucking, you know, there's no caramel sauce for the fucking coffee at the cafeteria at my job. <laughs> that's, that's the most pressure. Like at this point I have, like you're, you're talking about, you know, playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people, you know, a week <laughs> and on TV and you have all these pressures, you know, from, you know, committing to the draft or, you know, whatever, maybe, you know, Listen, you know, I think that, you know, that's a, that's normal. And for a 19 year old kid, 20 year old kid to go through that, um, I don't think a lot of people fully understand exactly what athletes go through on the mental side. You know, they see the, you know, they see the the glitz and glamour of like the you, they see the rewards, right? They see the results, right? Because they don't see you behind the scenes of what it takes to get those results, right? They see the physical results of what you're doing, but they don't see the mental results, right? The mental proactiveness that you have to have to, to keep that and to continue to have those um, fucking, I guess, God-given abilities that they get, you know, that he gave. And in addition to the hard work that you that that you did, but but I would say, you know, but you 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 had that injury. It didn't work out, you know, the way you liked. But I'm sure, you know, something clicked in your head. Was like, man. I can't give up. I still got to keep going. Like, right? Because you, uh, you still was able to fucking play yeah. 15 years pro. Like, yeah. so, you know? So look how it worked out. Yeah, that was that was just... Throughout our lives, we have a ton of defining moments in our lives that, that are going to contribute to the people we are today. And that was just one of the defining moments in my life. You know? Adversity, that, right? Coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think I think just just from this from that story, just a wise word that I have, you know, at least I have the the knowledge now, and I've told several up and coming prospects throughout the years, 
you have to when you're hot you have to make that jump you know because you never know what's going to happen time's not waiting for you money's not waiting for you nba's not waiting for you if you're a freshman and you know shout out to timmy d tim uh tim duncan who he's basically the epitome of the the, the four-year four-year athlete who goes gets his degree mm. has an amazing college career then has an amazing nba career but this is 20 years ago this is a long time this is before <laughs> this is 20 years ago you time. got yeah you got kids now in high school i think we were talking about the other day time, yeah times are changing now the younger the better you know guys are in guys there are 18 19 year old guys in the nba 17 year old guys in the nba right now you know what i mean and so i tell guys all the time that i'm talking to they hear my story and i'm like yo it's fine but if the nba is calling you if scouts are watching you if teams want you go go get that money because you, you you're seeing now Shaq's done it, Vince Carter's done it, so many so many other basketball players have done it. They've went gotten the money that's guaranteed, and then after when they're millions of dollars richer, then they can go get their 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 uh their degree. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because um, at least at least you know even if you get hurt, God forbid, you're in the NBA five years, God forbid you get hurt, you yeah. still get hurt and have millions of dollars and then you can go back and get your your degree and and and, you know i'm not taking any credit away from these these nba guys either but a lot of them i've actually bought their degrees anyway so (laughs) you know yeah yeah. i'm saying shaq is a doctor come on shaq has shaq got a doctor (laughs) come on come on I think it's yeah. Well, I think it's like one of those doctorates that they give you, um, for, you know, for you know, like those honorary doctor degrees, possibly. Bro. You know, um, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm you know, saying. listen, I barely read, Terrin. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I don't, I, like anything. Yeah. Like, you know, anyone that tells yeah, me who, if someone tells me mind, that they're a doctor, man. I'm gonna believe them. Like, expand, probably, like sleep. Expand your mind. For sure. Man. For sure. Oh yeah, trying. that's that's something I tell all my young guys coming up. Just. Go get the money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Set play, yourself up. Yeah. Play against the top guys in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Get that. Get that guaranteed contract. Because first round is still guaranteed. You know, I didn't really have. I was with my mother. With my mother. Grew up with my mother. Her main goal was me getting my degree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But right. she didn't necessarily know. She didn't see the vision. What yeah. was best for me in that aspect. I'm sure she knew it was best for me in general, but not in that aspect. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Is uh, I can I can kind of be the, the voice of reason for for maybe some young guys who were in my position when they're growing up now. Yeah. You know, they might not need, they might not know. And, and I think now times are different anyway because it's like now the younger the better. It's like now guys are skipping high school and going overseas. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah, they're doing real and well. And then too. By going overseas for one year because they had a rule which I'm sure I don't know if they've gotten rid of it or they're going to, but they had a rule where now you had to be one year removed from high school to be able to enter the draft. So guys were like, fuck it, I'm not going to college. I'm about to go overseas, make 200,000, 300,000, and then yeah. go to the league and make millions. Right, I get to compete at a high level. You know what I'm saying? Jennings, people. Um, um, Brandon, Brandon, uh, not Jennings, I said Jennings. Um, mm-hmm. um, he, did, he did that too. Jennings, yeah, Jennings did that too. He did it too back Jennings in the day. Jennings did yeah. it too, but I was actually talking about. I mean, the uh, most recent one that comes to mind is is uh, is, is the bar. Is yeah, the ball ball, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But that was he basically had mm. that set up for him. You know, he was never going to go to college mm. at all. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, he was never going to go to college. Yeah, because his his father had a set up for him, right? Especially now yeah. with the times, right. times are changing. He was like, man, there's no point for him to go to school. You can go t- overseas, make money, right? And. Uh, and then go to the NBA. And I'm actually talking about uh, Beverly, Patrick Beverly. Oh, so Pat Beverly, that. yeah. So he he actually played in Greece when I was in Greece. He was playing for Olympiacos, which is historically one of the top teams in Europe. Pat, Be- Pat Bev, he skipped high school, went to go play. I mean, not high school, sorry, college. College, Went yeah. to go play in Greece. Yeah. He was overseas, I think, two years. Now, shit, he's been... <laughs> Yeah. He's been in the league for years and I'm talking about he's he's basically a star in the NBA. Obviously known for his defense, but he's still Oh, he's, he's known. Still a guy. He's oh, still he's a, known. House, a household he's house, he's, people know him. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's yeah. that's becoming more common nowadays, you know? So it's like So what you're basically telling me, right, is 
you know, you go get the bag, and then once you get secured, go back to school. That's a good way to think about it. So let me ask you this. Are you also saying to me that I can work out for six months and then still try to get drafted in the NBA? You think I could do that right now? Bro, you you got it, man. Hey, it's all about it's all about mental mindset. You heard him. It's all about mental mindset. I need this as a clip. If you, if you, <laughs> I've been saying this to people. A, I could but, I could still make the NBA. But hold on, how old are you though? That's the only thing. Huh? We're not, listen, we're not here to talk about me. Yeah. We're talking, you know, that's this <laughs> listen, is this the is the Turin brand. Younger, bro. <laughs> yo, I, I still have people coming up to me on a daily basis, like, yo, we we could use you on the Knicks. Just because they see someone who's 6'11", <laughs> I have dreads. They're like, yo, he Beffy plays hoop. He Beffy plays ball. <laughs> they're just like, yo, yeah. bro, we could use you on the Knicks. And I'm like, bro, I could definitely help him too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Selling myself a dream still. <laughs> no, yo, my, yeah, I was playing. So now I play on the weekends. Yeah. Bro, I could barely dunk the other day. And I'm like, damn. I'm not, what happens? And I'm like, shit, I, re- I just really haven't played. Just didn't drink water, in my opinion. But nah, that's whatever. That's, so it's all muscle memory. You yeah. know, you have to remember we're in a pandemic now. Yeah. Gyms were closed for like a year, basically. You know, so now I'm really starting to get back up and down. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing in these. Uh, well, you just recently, you also just recently, you, you retired. Like, you know, well, not, you know, you just end up, you just stopped yeah, playing yeah, yeah, yeah. literally because of the pandemic. You were, you were still active. You played in like Europe for 10 years, right? Let me just name some of the countries you played in. Berlin, Turkey, Greece, Italy, Israel, right? Um, Argentina for like four or five years, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm missing any, but I think I got the gist of those teams, right? Yeah, and and that's really, you know, just going back to when I actually got injured, you know what I'm saying, once I came back, it it took me a while to get back physically physically but also mentally, you know what I mean? Because I was, you have to remember, I got the surgery and I was out for, I was basically couldn't do anything. I got the surgery. I couldn't do anything for eight weeks. And then eight weeks after I had to rehab for eight weeks. So that's four months right there. Just being able to just get into surgery, then rehabbing. And then I was able to like start jogging again, you know? So you're talking about a six month, six months that I was really out. But then I didn't really feel, even once I started playing again, I didn't really feel good again. It took me basically like a year to get back to feeling feeling pretty good again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that was just, um, that was like one of those defining moments that I talked about where it's like, what are you going to, what are you going to decide? Are you going to let this break you or are you going to come back stronger than you were before? That's what I'm saying, man. You know, and, and yeah. so, yeah. and so, I think once that injury happened to me, a lot of the NBA teams they kind of backed off of me because back then, you know, this was 17 years ago. So this is basically my sophomore year in college. This injury wasn't really common. I mean, I think Larry Bird actually had the same injury, but you know, Larry Bird was, you know, he's he's basically an iconic player. Mm-hmm. You know, for a lot of other players who had this injury throughout the time they were thinking thinking of it as kind of like a career ender you know until 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 a few years back cuz now with all the technology all the medical advancements that's nothing you know i think Embiid had it Simmons had it yeah. ben Simmons had it yeah um uh, Mike, Michael Porter he's about to have like his second one from uh from Nuggets okay. from the Nuggets you know so now it's people realize that you know, you can get that done and still be an amazing basketball player. You know, but when I was right. when I was playing, it wasn't really like that. But I just used that as motivation. You know, I said that even if I don't go to the basketball to, to the NBA, I can make an amazing career out of playing ball, seeing the world. I played 15 years. I played way more years. There was, there were guys in my class mm. who played one year in the NBA and never played again. You know what I mean? So it's like, would I want that for myself? Or would I want a career, 15-year career, traveling all around the world, learning about different cultures? You know, like you said, I lived in Italy. Mm-hmm. I lived in 
Italy for two years. I lived in. I asked you for Turkey Italian. For remember years. that? Remember that year when you were in Italy and I asked you to get me some Italian silk sheets, bro. Did this, I remember that? I just want. I just want to say you that you fucked up. In 15 years, this dude never came and visited me one time overseas, and I'm just like, yo, that's your loss, bro. Listen, I'm like, yo, I'm like, that's your loss. That's, and then, listen, I and wish. Then, and, and then, and then, ten of those years, I was married. So I'm like, yo, the first five years when I wasn't married, I'm like, bro, this is when you need to come visit me, bro. Listen, <laughs> it wasn't even when I'm married. Like, you'll still have an amazing time. You listen, know what man, I, mean? I that, that's the one. I don't. I re, I I was gonna say I don't regret a lot of things. Actually, I do. There's a lot of things I regret. <laughs> but one of the things I do regret is not visiting you and uh, and all the countries that you you know that you were in and that was just primarily not because i didn't want to that's just because you know um there was someone you know department of uh natural naturalization services you know i had some issues with them so we have to work those out <laughs> <laughs> so we're, yeah yeah you it. know I how that goes you. so but um but yeah yeah i mean i i say i said i say this a lot um you, you mentioned about the traveling and seeing the world and uh which you did you literally did um, I say this a lot, and I, I don't think I'll ever stop saying it. And I've heard this before. I said, I feel like this is how you measure people. One of the one of the best ways to measure a person is based on distance traveled. If that makes sense. So, how if I if I'm if I'm like, I like to listen to people who have seen different things and then seen different perspectives. Because that's when you really learn about yourself, I feel like. You know what I mean? So when I say, like, oh, you measure a person based on distance traveled, I'm saying, oh, you, me- you, you, you kind of look at someone who's seen a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? And you're a person that's seen a lot of things. And it's really, really, it's transparent because how you are as a person, you really do take in perspective from a lot of things. You know, and I, that's one thing I've noticed about you. Can you, like... Tell me like how important that is for people to get out and see different things and how that shaped you going forward into also future endeavors that you're doing now, like business wise, which we'll get into. And, you know, so. yeah, I mean, I, I can't say it enough. I always tell people to see the world, you know, and especially, um, you know, we're both from Boston. I'm living in New York now. There's something about people. Not everyone, obviously, I'm generalizing, but there's something about people from New York where they think that it's only New York and nothing outside of New York. There's people in New York who've never left New York in their whole lives. There's people in Boston like that, you know? too. Yeah. There's people everywhere like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. There's people everywhere like that. You yeah. know, and, it's, and I always encourage those people just to, to see the world just because there's so much to be seen. You know, and it's like I can say, you know, I, you, you think of just all of the – all of whatever, the, all the sites – all the history there is around the world. You Hell know, so yeah. Like I've been to Hell the yeah. Great Wall of China. You know, I've been to, in in Israel, I've been to the Dead Sea, where, you know, that's that's basically Dead Sea is where they said Moses part of the water. But it really, it, that really wasn't the case. It's I it, got it, beef with the it, Dead Sea because I'm from I'm from the Red Sea part. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we don't fuck with the Dead Sea like that. Yeah. I'm from Eritrea, so we have the Red Sea. Oh, the side. Red Sea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Red Sea all day, bitch. Yeah, so the... Sorry. So the, <laughs> I'm just sorry. I went, I went left. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, the, so the thing with the Dead Sea is that... Red Sea Entertainment LLC, by the way. They say... <laughs> they say, you know, they say that Moses part of the water mm-hmm. and that he walked over the water, but it's really that the the dead sea is so dense so there's so much salt that you could just float on top of the water what? you know so I like a buoy have, like a buoy like i yeah, like a buoy yeah, like you're not gonna sink what? they used yeah. to call me buoy too as a kid because i was well, fat well, that's, that's why right. yeah you were fat i was a chubby kid you were? yeah <laughs> yeah <I> were. <laughs> now nah, you should you getting in shape now I'm, you see me oh yeah you see me we were doing Ty Bo, billy blanks over here first of all <laughs> First of all, just because me and him look like each other don't mean we're doing the same stuff. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But it is important, though. I, I think it's important. I think I think a lot of people, I think, you know what's one thing that bothers me about that about that part is that in regards with people, I'm not, I don't get too, I don't get too upset at the fact that, like, people, people don't get out and see other things. There could be a lot of different reasons as to why. Maybe economics, you know, they don't have the ability to travel to go see other countries. I, I mean, that is a real thing. You know, most people in this country work paycheck to paycheck. They don't have the luxury to actually afford to go see different places throughout the year, right? 
because you know they they most people have two three jobs just trying to survive. So traveling, in my opinion, is a privilege. But I feel like you don't have to go too far to see different things. But if you do have the privilege to go to different countries and see different things, that's dope. My problem is the people, not so much that they don't go out and see different things, the unwillingness to know, not to know different things, and they choose not to. Those are the ones that like bother me. Because I can't live, I can't see myself living in this world without not wanting to know other things and other people. That's just me. But yeah, I mean, that, I just wanted to dro- drop a mic right there real quick. That's no, also yeah, and that's really and that's <laughs> and that's really that's really what it's about, you know. Just thinking, you know, I've been to the Coliseum, you know. It's like I've been to Eiffel Tower and the Louvre, you know. It's mm-hmm. like I've been to you know so many places. I seen the I seen the uh, the in, in Berlin, all all the all the art, the 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 wall in Berlin that they have there i've seen the wall but i didn't have to go to berlin i've seen the wall right at my house <laughs> you've seen <the laughs> a couple whiskeys yeah a couple whiskeys you see the wall right away like. yeah. <laughs> yeah so i just feel like there's so much out there yeah. and and you know i just i just think that just gives you an open mind yeah of an open mind to just all the cultures that there are out there just all the different types of people and that's just going to make you a more well-rounded individual you know, moving forward, I think the more places you've been, you have more things that you can actually relate with with other people, you know, which is only going to to help you in the long run, help you moving along, you know. So I think all of that has has definitely been been influential for me and for my life and it continues to, to help me on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's real. That's real. That's a real thing. You know, I when I started this podcast, I said to myself, you know, um, you know, I I'm primarily going to be having individuals on that have seen different things that I have, you know, like I want people who are who've seen different who just have different perspective and seen different things, you know, because I I'm sorry, I, I just can't sit down and like talk about fucking, you know, the Quincy fucking shipyard you know every single year you mm-hmm. know for like people back in boston like hey yeah down the shipyard you know when my daddy was a shipyard you know he find it's like a, okay you your daddy lived fucking 80 years did he go anywhere outside from the shipyard you know what <laughs> i mean like can, can, you, can you tell me something about your pops like, you know what i mean so yeah so traveling is one thing that i that i that i really look forward to when i do um and and talking to people who have seen different things and i've been with you you know throughout that journey you know so um, not, you know, physically in those places, but in spirit and also just seeing you play and um, having a really successful career. Um, most people can't, you know, you've done that, you know, you've played professional, you know, 15 years, right, I would say. Most people can't even work out 15 times straight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we have to, like, acknowledge people who are who have done shit for a long time there's 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 um there's great respect in that there's great honor in that and there's and it's 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 i don't and i think now there is a thing out there i don't know how much of it is out there but there is a thing out there that there the younger generation of people i don't even know if it's younger but there is an idea out there that you know people don't um have to respect people who have done things before them you know and, or they don't have to respect how long they've done them, you know. You know, people want the quick, fast, you know, success, you know. And hard work, consistency, you know, patience, you know, those things. Don't All those variables, like you said, Tarin, I think make up a well-rounded individual. Um, so um, it's pretty dope, you know. And then I was talking about now fast forward now, you know, now you're in New York City after – after basketball now what is Turin Francis doing you know what's the what's the next thing that you see yourself doing what what's your vision now for the next 10 15 years you know because you just came from you know f- almost 20 years of playing being an athlete pretty much things were pretty much handed not want to say handed but prepared for you based off hard work but things were done now you're how are you preparing yourself for life after basketball and you know where do you see yourself in that yeah, so you know, I I do. I've been talking this whole time. Uh, you know, I, I want to, 
I want to give a shout out to my fam because you know it's it's and, and by my fam I mean my wife. I do have a wife. I have four beautiful children. Four. Yep. Yeah, and I just want to give a shout out to them just because I got five I would, on it. <laughs> four, four. Four on four. it. I was, I was. I was saying getting, if there's another one. Okay, I was just getting busy overseas. <laughs> actually, yeah, you had of, kids early. One of my sons. Yeah. So actually, so I had my first, my daughter Malia. I had her my senior year in college. Ooh. So I actually had a child in college. You know, so that was amazing. That was a blessing. Um, my one of my sons, Tristan, he was actually born in Berlin, so that was dope. Just to and 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 it was so dope because that year when I was in Berlin, normally when you're playing overseas, you are chilling with your teammates all day, every day, and then normally during the uh, overseas, the season runs from I would say August until about May. So you're normally playing that time, and then in the summertime you're usually home. So I would I would always come to, you know, before I got married I would come back to Boston in the summer, and then yeah. after I got married, I would be coming back to New York in the summer. So that summer in Berlin, we had my son in Berlin, so I actually stayed in Berlin for that summer, and I think that was dope. I first of all I love Berlin. Mm-hmm. Anyone who hasn't been to Berlin, go check it out. It's one of my favorite mm-hmm. places, one of my favorite cities that I that I lived in, that I visited because they have something for everyone. And you know, you never really realize it just because you always hear about the history of Berlin and everything that they've gone through. But it's actually one of the most diverse places that I've lived in, that I've been to, that I visited. Um, they have a ton of ton of different people from all t- all all over the world ton of different cultures tons of different restaurants different activities whether it's nightlife sightseeing whatever but it's dope check it out but that summer i stayed in berlin that summer so i had no teammates there so it actually forced me to be cool and i had been cool with other people other than athletes throughout my career but this was really different just because i I didn't have any of my teammates there so it was just Mm. me so I actually was cool with a group of I would say artists you know so it was two artists that were like artists they were painters painters Mm -hmm. two were painters two were photographers so you're talking where you're hanging with comedians pretty much basically yeah 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 (laughs) yeah yeah. I mean you're artists too yeah yeah you know but two were photographers it was one rapper one R&B singer and so this was dope because I felt like I got to see like the under, the the um the basically underground yeah Berlin. So I'm I, all I with, I'm into the underground. You know me, yeah. man. I'm all about yeah. the underground scene. Yeah. So I'm so. around underground hip hop, underground, fucking you know supermarkets, underground you know you know fucking you know clothes. You know I don't want to go to like Macy's anymore. I want to no, go to like the, you don't yeah. want you don't want the mainstream shit. You want the exclusive shit. Right. Yeah. So. That gave me a chance. I would go to the studio. They had a studio. They all rent. They had a studio space. They all rented the space. So, in the space, there were photographers doing their shoots. There would be the painters in their space painting. They would have. They had the studio part. They would be recording. So right. I would just go there. Nice. We'd be burning. Just, <laughs> a, just, just like a bro- brothel of creative people. Tr- bro, different spaces. It was, right? it was dope. Yeah. It was dope. It was dope. Yeah. And so, that. I remember, I remember, we actually went to this one bar, and it was just like you see on the movies where you knock, someone like opened up this little, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> opened up this little peephole yeah. just to see who it was. Yeah. Then they open the door, bro. We go into this one underground spot. Yo, this is dope. Yeah, Sounds like dope. the studio that I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, Too Much it Content was, Studios. It was dope. <laughs> That's exactly how I came in Shout here. Shout out. Thanks for having us. <laughs> But um, but yeah, it was dope, man. And that was just one of the, one of the times that was really special to me because I really got to not only just be in the city, but just actually chill with people from there for a few months. Mm-hmm. And it, it was just another experience yeah. from just you know all the other experiences I had overseas. You know, so that time. So but so my son, he was born there, which was dope. Um, then I have my other son. 
he was born so this is another crazy story he was born the, my son Caden was born before Tristan mm -hmm. he was born in New York but this this is crazy so he was born on April 6th mm -hmm. April 6th um, 2010 so they were actually living here my wife came to live with me after he was born so I came home luckily I was able to luckily I was able to see all my kids born which is a blessing never miss one of their childbirths so he was born in April you know normally April is cold that week there was a, a, a heat wave in New York so it was like 90 degrees it was April it was 90 degrees wow. so I flew home had a game flew home get home my wife is like she's good but she's like starts going into labor i was home for like two days she's having contractions but she doesn't think they're real contractions she thinks they're like braxton hicks contractions well anyone who has who's ever been pregnant those are basically like fake contractions they're not real contractions mm -hmm. so she thinks she's having these right and then she's standing in the living room she's like oh i'm having braxton hicks and she stands up and psh, her water just breaks like all over the floor so i'm like oh did, shit did you gotta get, go did, huh? What do you mean? Did you get her another, like, another glass of water? What do you mean? <laughs> no, her water. Bro, her water breaks. Oh, the water, yes. water. Oh, the baby water. Yes, her water oh, breaks. Oh, I thought you were talking like a so pouring spray glass pour, or It just shit. starts pouring, <laughs> pouring out, pouring out. So I'm like, we had a, we actually had a, a midwife at that time. So, because I, I wasn't home. So she just needed someone to help her out. So I call her and I'm like, yo, her water just broke. She's like, oh, I think she's going into labor. So luckily she was close. So she came over to the house, right? Yeah. She examined Mia, and she's like, yo, she's going into labor. We got to go right now. So she, I ran downstairs, pulled the car up. We were living in Harlem at this time. Mm -hmm. And so we had to drive. The hospital was all the way downtown. Harlem was uptown. Yeah. Hospital was downtown. Shout we out took the FDR. Where, shout out Dame Dash Daisy. <laughs> uptown. <laughs> so get the car. The midwife grabs a few towels. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mia. the wife always, listen, any woman that has having a baby, it's not getting in the way of the stuff she needs that she wants to take with her. Bro, I, my yeah. mom, when she was giving birth to my like my brother, Sam, it took her an hour to get into the car. She she was, it's like t typical African, like she put on perfume. She put on like her traditional clothes. My dad's like, you're having a baby. Can you get in the car and stop trying to look good? She's like, I need to put on makeup. I'm like, are, my dad's like, are you crazy? Uh, like, <laughs> hey, but listen, she wasn't actually actively going into labor. So we're in the car. I'm driving. I'm like on the FDR driving to the hospital. Looking back, my Mia's screaming. I'm like, damn, baby's about to come. Baby came. So my son was born in the car. <laughs> yes, my son was Damn. born. Caden was born in the car. So that's, that's that's wow. I pull up to the hospital, run inside. I'm like, yo, my wife just had the baby in the car. They like bring the stretcher outside, and do all that, take her, take her inside. And I'm like, yo, that's that's crazy. That's that's crazy. That's, that's but wow. But that that's that's an amazing story. You know, I think all my kids are amazing. I think that, you know, I was speaking about me. I think it's really been amazing for them to have had the opportunity to grow up in another country. You know, my daughter, I speak Spanish fluently. My oldest daughter speaks fluently. My other kids, they, you know, they, they can understand Spanish, you know. So I think that really is going to be, and I think it already has been very beneficial for them, just for them to see what there is out there and open their eyes to, to just the, how big the world is, how many different types of people yeah. there, are, there are out there. Yeah. It's shaped them and mm -hmm. it's contributing to who they are right now. So I thought that was important to share just because, you know, they basically held me down all those years overseas. So I definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without them, you know? So I think that's, yeah. that's you know, uh, in addition to me working hard, I definitely had that support system as well which made me even more successful out there that's a good thing that's it's it's like you're paying it forward like daddy did it he traveled the world he he saw different perspectives he saw the benefits of that and 
it's like passing on that same thing to your kids, you know, and they see that and they're, you know, and they become well-rounded because me and you, we talk about it a lot. You know, we talk about how, you know, I think me and you, we think similar in the, in, in the space of like the importance of like not really caring, not really have no fear of where you're going. Right. Like me and you, like as a comedian, that's part of the thing. I think that's a, I think it's I think I think Jerry Seinfeld said this, but I I've, I've heard it before. It's like as as someone who's like a who 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 strives on like you know I guess just going to different places and and learning from different things. You have to you have to be a little crazy in a sense of you have to like n- you have to like like not knowing where you're going or be comfortable of where, of where you you don't you don't know where you're going. You know, like me and you will just go to a place and we won't know where it is, but we're, we're fine. We're confident like this is we're going to make an experience out of this. You know, I, those people that are like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to go there because I don't know who's who's there. Who's going to who's going to be at the party? How many people are going to be there? You know, those people, you invite them. They're just like they're already just robbing you of your fucking enthusiasm. You know, Ugh. <laughs> hate those people. You know, it's like it's like not you just like perspective. Don't be scared. Let's let's you know, let's learn. Let's. You know, it's a good thing. You know, yeah. uh, um, and, a, and a lot of and a lot of those people are just closed-minded. You know what I mean? So they just owe it to themselves to get out. And obviously, like you said, some people don't have the means. But it's not even about the people who want to do it. It's just about and can't. It's about the people who just aren't even interested. You know, they're really just ignorant to the fact of that there's so much out there. You know, so those are. Those are definitely those type of people who are just like, yo, who's gonna be at the party? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of just just letting it flow and just yeah. saying it doesn't matter who's at the party. It could be a connection. You know what I'm saying? It could be yeah. someone who's could doing be a vibe. something dope. It could be a vibe. So it could be yeah. someone who's going to, you know, have a dope podcast that that you're gonna be on, or someone that could could yeah. be a partner like in a business venture. You know, and that's the amazing thing about this life is that. You never know from one day to the next. You never know who you're going to meet or what's going to happen or who you're, what you're going to see. You know what I mean? And that's the amazing thing about life. You know, and I think up until now, I think my life has been amazing. You know, I think I've been super blessed. Um, you know, I think that I've gotten to see the world. And, you know, I think that it's, it's, it's just it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue. You know, even if I'm not traveling, even if I'm not playing ball, there's this whole other part of my life now that I'm looking forward to. It's it's the life after basketball that I'm looking forward to. You know, unfortunately, it's been, you know, over the past year and a half, everything was basically shut down. Yeah. You know, so I came home. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I was really thinking about what I'm going to do now. You know, and I think that actually being in the, in the pandemic, it was it was a good time just to be able to to evaluate what I want to do moving forward. Right. You know, it wasn't like yep. I came home, I actually had time to think, I had time to talk to people, I had time to work on things. You know, so it's it, it really was like what's going to happen to me now, you know, and it's like now in the past few months I've just enjoyed, I've loved being in New York, just being back in the city, meeting people, connecting with people. Um, you know, just vibing with people, um, you know, making plans for for what's next for for life after basketball. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. You know, I think I've I've had an amazing life, and I I think there's plenty more. You know, I, people say, "Oh, what are you gonna do now that you're retired?" And I'm like, "Nah, I'm not retired. I'm just starting the next chapter of my life." You know, who, who no one gets retired at 38 years old. I mean, I want to, I want to be retired. <laughs> shit hopefully in the next 10 years but that's willingly right. not because it's my age just because i've just been so successful where i can do that you know so those are the plans right yeah well there's a lot of <clears throat> you know we talk about things um a lot we talk about like we're, the things that we want to do things that we want to accomplish individually things that we want to do collectively um and i think in, in you know I've learned throughout, like, up until this point, because, you know, there's a thing that I've learned, you know, progress is, there's, there's no final destination for progress. You know, progress is infinite. You know, you, you can always learn things at any age. You can always continue to grow. You can always continue to challenge yourself. You know, there's no ending point for that. Unless 
unless you want it to be. And you can end it by just not doing anything, right? But it all comes to choices at the end of the day. You have a choice to be better. You have a choice of just being eh. And I choose to be better. And how I want to be better is by learning from other people who are better. <laughs> you know what I mean? At being better. So I'm going to continue to like do that. And um, and I see yourself doing a lot of good things. And, I, and you, know, you have a lot of things going on now. Um, you started up a, a like a company, right? Island Ice NYC. So we'll do that plug, you know, I- Island Ice NYC, and you can describe it, shout it out, put the plugs out, you know. Yeah. So it, for anyone who hasn't heard yet, check out Island Ice NYC. We make <laughs> premium, premium alcohol infused ices. It's all top shelf liquors, all natural and organic juices, no artificial flavors, uh, no preservatives. And so I actually launched this company during the pandemic, which, you know, I think the pandemic was amazing for a lot of people just because people were just starting businesses. You know, it's like, <clears throat> when, when is there a better time than being in a pandemic, not being able to work, not being able to go outside? Shit, use that to your advantage. That's right. You know, so I, right. always, I always had this idea. My wife and I always had this idea of island ice and then it was actually born during the pandemic so feedback has been amazing sales have been amazing and so we're we're really just trying to grow and you know with island ice uh, we're basically so my family is jamaican i already told you that my wife's family is puerto rican so it's really a mix of of just the bold flavors that we love tropical flavors um fresh fruit a few of the flavors have fresh fruit. A bunch of the flavors have fresh fruit, and um, so, you know, I've I've had, I've had orders, nationwide. We're actually not shipping yet, but that's coming soon. That's coming soon. Yeah. You know, we're we're growing, so we plan to get them out to to everyone. Right. So check it out, Island Ice NYC. Um, definitely support. Uh, you know, the brother here. He's doing good things. He, you, I mean, if you follow this podcast. He, you will know him. All you will, you just will. It just, this is a, this is a team here. So you will know uh, anything that I do. Turin will be involved. Anything that he does, he will make sure that I won't be. So let's. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, just kidding. What? Turin's like, man. Listen, you, you, you've been, you, you've been drinking too much Island Ice NYC in the back, man. You, I can't bring you to we this gotta, trip. We gotta win together. <laughs> yeah, man, we gotta win together. I know. Yeah, man, and we and I think me and you have. Um, I remember the first day that we've we met. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, and who would have thought that first day we would be here? You know, know. almost twenty years later. I, like, re- I remember we met too at Waterworks. Waterworks, yeah, yeah Waterworks. <laughs> at Waterworks, so I actually went to yeah. to high school with his cousin. Yeah. And so yeah. we were at um we did. this one spot in Waterworks. That used to be the spot. Used to be the spot. Back then. We, that, Sunday night spot. I'm I'm gonna tell you this, only, man. That's on, gonna. The only thing is they only, they used to close that one. That was the only bullshit about it. But right. it was it was always dope. That's gonna be another episode, man. That 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 that's a that was a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Waterworks, you know. Um, T. Um, this has been great. It was, man. It's like I have so I have so much more to say. We're we're gonna have to have a part two. Oh yeah, where yeah. We, where we really oh, yeah. get into yeah, we gonna get into, get into everything. Just the overseas experience, uh, you yeah. know, just some stories, yeah. you know. But this was thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was just able to share my story, share my experiences. You know, hopefully, it's uh, ho- hopefully, it's it's inf- hopefully, it's some great information for for anyone, you know. But anyone who is at a crossroads. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they just need to hear something positive about just putting in work, just yeah. just staying the course, just knowing that it's gonna pay off. You know, maybe some young hoopers not knowing what they wanna do, which road to take. You know, this is and, and I'm always here. You know what I'm saying? I'll I'll leave I'll leave my info. I'm not sure how you do that, but Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we got you covered. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Definitely have the plug to hit me up and yeah. I'm down. I've seen it all. I've seen it all been through it all so i could definitely yeah. definitely answer a ton of questions and hopefully i could help someone else help yeah. someone out 
Yeah, and that's what we're about on this uh, on this team of uh, you know, that's what I'm all about too, and that's where I, what I'm focused on going forward. Um, being surrounded by people who share the same sentiment, um, and you know, using people's um, you know, helping people's strengths and also help help them you know with their weaknesses too. I think more people at help people when they're hot and doing great stuff, but they don't really help when things are not going so well. You know, and those are the times where you really need someone to to go through things. You know, so um, you help me in a lot of those moments um, throughout the years. Uh, hopefully, I I've you know done the same in some facets. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, no yeah, man. So this was dope. Uh, we definitely gonna have a part two, and I appreciate you coming on. And uh, we're in NYC tonight, so I'm sure we're gonna be stepping out and seeing what the streets look like. And why? And uh, shout out to Too Much Content Studios. Uh, for for hosting us, uh, shout out to Irish O'Neill and uh, Ani Moosh. Um, you know, thanks for uh, having us. And, uh, thanks for having guys, us. Guys, thank this you. This is dope. This is a this is a hidden gem in yeah, the city. This is a studio's Definitely dope. A dope spot. So uh, thank you. Cut to Chase podcast. Peace.